OIC Studios presents performances from the OIC Studios open mic event, recorded live at Backwoods Guitar in Sedalia, Missouri. And now here's your host, James Bryant. This is the OIC Studios Open Mic Podcast, where we present to you past performances from the Open Mic event held at Backwood Guitar in Sedalia, Missouri. From April 19, 2019, here is Damon Freed. Okay, um, summer, uh, summer, this winter has stolen the prose from my fingertips, but today I got the best of the bitch. I opened the door on my sun-baked Ford and headed down the back streets into coming spring. You see, I've lived in this town long enough to know which roads lead to the best weather. Some are just dead ends for the tourists, but others lead you right past the little girl standing with arms up, grasping the sky in a red dress, bold with her back against the base of an old gray maple. Winter's hold just melts away from the eyes like a flame to wax. A little further down the road, I dodged a blue jay and swerved into what looked like miles of sun shafts and bolts ablaze on Maine. The old industry of this town came alive for a moment and one remembered Hitchcock. Hickok and the kid and Scott Joplin, and every other gunslinger and or artist who likely came through on horseback or by rail. And the ladies with their dresses and beautiful hair up in fancy hats were there too. But most of all, there's the memory of you, Summer. How good to me you've been throughout the years in this fading cow town. Thank you. Okay, I'll read this one. It's called Fool for Love. In love, sometimes you fight, sometimes you fight, and sometimes you put your tail between your legs like a dog. Sometimes you battle the wrong person for the wrong reasons, but sometimes you fight, and sometimes you lose, and sometimes you win. Yes, sometimes you win. He was a chubby boy, smart ass, not too good with the girls. My recent ex, she must have had sympathy for this guy because they were hanging out, hanging out and my ex-girlfriend's friend was there too. My ex invited me back to her place at the end of the night, out on the t- Lower East Side, where we bumped into each other, and I accepted her offer. I was out on the town with my buddy Dave from Texas, and we had a grand evening until I departed from him and headed uptown. When I arrived, I went inside. This little downstairs bar below my ex-girlfriend's apartment, and she was there with her friend from back home and the chubby boy. He clearly, from the start, he clearly, from the start, didn't care for me. This kid thought he was about to score with the girls. It was obvious to me, but he was no threat, really. And I respect an underdog. It's just that this guy was a real loser. Well, 
We were hanging out for a brief time and he directed no talk or discussion my way the entire time. Was just concentrated on the gals and consumed by himself and it was eating at me. But I arrived last, so I sat and waited quietly for my opportunity to talk and did my best to cooperate in conversation when he did speak. Well, one thing led to the next and the girls were ready to go back to my ex's apartment upstairs. I agreed to go. About the time we got out front of the apartment building, that shithead started in on me. Like, you shouldn't be here, man. And just go home, dude. I'm telling you, it really struck a nerve. I had a thing for that girl. And unfortunately, they were already inside the glass doors and on their way upstairs. So, they heard none of it. None of the banter back and forth. So I had no witnesses, no defense, and sometimes a man gets the best of himself. So, on my way inside, I quickly changed directions and popped him a good one straight on the nose and laid him flat. Shit, I thought. If I was thinking at all, so much for that. The girls are really going to love this and about then, my ex's friend was all over me like, you dick, what's wrong with you? Just go home. It was deja vu all over again, just after that little prick also told me to get bent. But I wasn't finished. I kicked him a couple more times on the ground and about then a pedestrian nearby who must have witnessed and heard the entire incident, ran over and said to me, man, you really need to get out of here in a decent tone. So I left. I took the subway all the way home back to Brooklyn and told my roommate all about what happened with dried blood down both pant legs. I explained how rude he was, what an inferior prick he was for acting like a Billy Badass while I was quiet and polite to him the entire time. I gave her the whole story. And on top of that, I was worried the guy would have to have his nose fixed. And if so, what in the hell was I going to do? And she said to me then, Damon, my roommate, You have a real problem. These stains are going to be hard to get out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, so I've, I'll preface this one real quick. Uh, I read it one other time at an artist gathering. So I figured I would uh, treat you all to this delight. Um, it's about downtown. Plastic town. <clears throat> Plastic town. Everyone goes downtown these days. At night, they pretend to have had a hard day's work, a sit retired at the bar. The old industry also sits, once beautifully decayed, now refurbished, like it's spanking new. Old, crumbling sods, repainted, reworked, like the olden days. And I remember some of those days. No neighbors, the grit, the grime. Falling down fences, no restraint. The old candy store, butcher shop, dollar store. Boom boxes blaring upstairs and on the streets. The rundown brothels, the alleyways at night. But now, you can't play your music so loud. The gentries don't like it that way. Their souls are tired, as if tired, and have lost sight of the hard road. The tough bloods are all but gone, and the blondes are artificial like the Windex panes of glass on the storefronts. And all the cats still roam the streets 
but are fat and well fed. And that courthouse flame still flames. But no one has the balls these days to light a joint off it. They just smoke their cigarettes by it and talk about justice as if it exists. And like it or leave it, I'm here to watch the overflow and to criticize the fat-ass lawyers who haven't needed a drink to get through the day in 30 years. The tears don't get cried, the cheers don't get sighed, and the crickets and cockroaches have all but died. But tonight, I'll be pretending like it always was and used to be, and playing my radio loud as white lightning. Maybe something like Jungle Land at three quarters volume will suit the mood, if I'm lucky. Before brooding sets in even worse, then I'm bound to join in with all those fake showboats at the bar sitting there pretending like life never mattered or existed in this godforsaken town. Thank you. This is Christy Fox. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation from OIC Studios. To be notified of future OIC Studios open mic performances, click on the subscribe button. Thank you.